OK, uh, hello folks. Uh, so uh, if you're here, then I just want to make sure that we're all in the right session. So this is about creating interacting bots for Microsoft Teams. In this module, you'll learn how to uh, create and add bots uh, within a custom Microsoft Teams app. Uh, so if you would like to follow along, go ahead and follow on to this link, aka.ms slash learn slash Teams bots. Uh, you know it's 6:45, but maybe we will give uh, folks uh, a few more. Uh, we'll give folks a few more minutes to join in and trickle trickle in. But uh, yeah, so while we do that, um, let me just walk you through the agenda real quick. So first, you know, I'll, I'll just introduce myself and like who I am. Then uh, the majority of this course is going to be you having actually. Uh, I'll be taking you and actually having you build a bot. So we'll start from scratch, and by the end of this, hopefully, you know you will have a, a hello world sort of a demo um, a bot up and running within Microsoft Teams. Uh, we'll be doing this together, and after that, I'll give you a sort of like a high-level overview of like what are the different uh, nuances of bot development and team, and how to get started over there. And lastly, I do want to reserve like 10 to 15 minutes of questions at the end uh, for everyone who has. Uh, so please do make use of uh, the questions. Uh, we'll just collect all the questions at the end and, and, and uh, take them. Uh, so hey, uh, so uh, this is uh, me. Uh, I'm Ajaswi. Uh, I'm a product manager on the Microsoft Teams platform, and I am working on bots, connectors, and cards. With me, I've got uh, Pradeep, Raghav, Shanmati, Yuni, June, Sid, Susanna, and Tatiana. Uh, these are folks from uh, our engineering and product marketing team. So we've got eight sets of moderators over here to help you out. Uh, so you've got any questions with regards to, hey, uh, I was following along uh, the module, but I have uh, I had some doubts over here. I've got some questions. Please, please, please do type in the chat. We've got uh, you know some highly capable people who can help you out. And if you've got like more uber high level questions with regards to here, here's something that I would like to see in terms of bots uh, development or you know we didn't really cover this in the or if there's something that I don't cover in the chat today, definitely do put that in. Those type of questions will take at the end. In the moment, if you're getting stuck somewhere, you know we'll have uh, we have a lot of support to help you out. So please make use of that. Uh, just some normal housekeeping stuff. Uh, this session uh, will be recorded um, and uh, we'll release it on YouTube later on. So this is another nice thing too. Uh, please do try to follow along as much as possible. But if you feel at some point, hey, uh, you know, uh, uh, we're going ahead too fast or uh, I really missed a step or I don't have a tool or like this one particular configuration isn't enabled for me. Don't worry, still just continue along the session. Just make sure you understand everything and uh, we'll release it on YouTube eventually so you can come back and reference it and maybe next week just go ahead and complete it. Questions, you know, please uh, use the chat window. And uh, lastly, please adhere to the Microsoft uh, Digital Events Code of Conduct. We'll also be sharing this in the chat. So uh, this is the same for across all of our build events. Part one, uh, so let me just give you a brief overview of what exactly we're going to cover in part one. So uh, I'll just start by giving you an overview of like what type of scenarios and tasks are best handled by bots. Uh, how do bots work? Like what are the three or four main things that you need to get a bot service up and running? What differentiates a bot uh, in Microsoft Teams versus a bot uh, in web chat if you've done uh, web chat development or bot development for other platforms before. Then we'll actually uh, dig deep into and I'll do a demo and I hope you'll follow along where we'll actually uh, develop, deploy and test. Well, we won't actually deploy, we'll host it locally, but we'll develop and test a bot and get it running in Microsoft Teams. And uh, lastly, we'll cover some uh, basics around conversational bots in Teams. So without further ado, let's get started. Uh, I want you to head on to this link aka.ms learn slash teams bots. Uh, so you can follow along. And if you follow, if you've gone to that link, it should uh, take you to this learn module, creating interactive conversational bots for Microsoft Teams. Um, let's 
get started. I'm in, uh, going to the introduction tab right now. Um, uh, so uh, let's look at what the module is all about. So conversational bots allow users to interact with your web service through text, interactive adaptive cards, and DOS modules. These bots can be scoped to handle simple commands. Developers can also create complex artificial intelligence and natural language processing powered virtual assistants. In this module, you learn how to create and add bots to a custom Teams apps. So effectively, you know, if you do this right, by the end of this, you will have your own very first bot up and running, and you will have learned the fundamentals of bot development within Microsoft Teams. Uh, these are the prerequisites and the learning objectives. Additionally, I do I do highly recommend you going through uh, the um, and the GitHub resources that we have. Uh, so I won't be presenting the slide deck throughout. I'll just be running through uh, through the module, but within the GitHub resources, we've got a slide deck that walks us through it. Uh, in the demo section, you'll also find all the code associated with this. So do you want to give a shout out to Andrew Connell, who was uh, the Microsoft MVP who you know developed this bot. Uh, sorry, uh, developed this module as well as the, the, as the and the bot as well. Uh, there is also uh, a YouTube screencast uh, that goes. There is also another YouTube screencast that goes through for the board development process. So you know, if you by the end of this call, you should have multiple options of people walking through uh, and delivering bots for you. So let's get started. Okay, so firstly, uh, I will cover Unit Two, which is an overview of bots with Microsoft Teams. So uh, we've already covered this. Uh, so let's look at what tasks are best handled by bots. So bots in Microsoft Teams can be part of a one on one conversation, a group chat or a channel in a team. Each scope provides unique opportunities and challenges for your conversation bots. So I think what we mean by this is if you've got familiarity with Microsoft Teams, here I am inside a demo tenant. Um, and uh, Actually, uh, and uh, let me uh, just call this thing out real quick. Uh, uh, you don't need to do this right now, but maybe in like uh, 15, 20 minutes, this might be relevant for you. Uh, we did ask that everyone have uh, uh, in one of the prerequisites. We did ask everyone have a, a Microsoft 365 developer tenant. So if you are using that tenant, please ensure that you are logged in as the admin account because later on we'd like to upload an app and test it out. So please, uh, if you're using some other uh, account, it might be worthwhile to you be on the admin account for the uh, developer tenant. OK, uh, so uh, yeah, so coming back, bots in Microsoft Teams can be part of a one on one conversation, a group chat or a channel. So what we mean by that is there are different scopes of collaboration within Microsoft Teams, right? The first one is a, a channel conversation where multiple members can uh, Will come together and collaborate on a particular uh, on a particular topic. So over here we have got the market project team. We're in the general channel or in the design channel where uh, you know all of the design uh, where all of the designs of the upcoming product launch are being uh, 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 worked through. So this is the first scope. The second scope is uh, a one-on-one -on -one chat where you know I am chatting to Megan, for example. This is a conversation between only me and Megan. A third scope would be a group chat where it's uh, Megan and uh, let me find another sample user, manage team, Nestor. Okay. So uh, a group chat is any chat between three or more people. So you can also add a, uh, and a, got a bot in this uh, in this context. So uh, there we have it, right? We've got uh, these are the three different uh, modalities where your bots can be installed and, and work. Now, uh, the interesting thing is uh, with regards to Microsoft Teams, um, the type of context that you're operating in, whether it be a channel or a group chat or a one on one chat, changes the scenario of the bot that you're going to want to uh, changes the scenario for which you would want to create your bot. Specifically inside a channel, the sort of scenarios that would make the most sense would be notifications uh, scenarios where uh, let's say there is something happening in an external system where you're managing incidents or uh, you're uh, tracking opportunities and something is updated over there and you want to funnel that information to your team so that everyone can track it together. That would be uh, uh, that would be a notification scenario. 
Uh, another great scenario that works in a channel would be feedback scenarios such as polls and surveys. Uh, with a po uh, really what we want to do in a team is we want to bring people together and have them collaborate. So polls and surveys are a great way of doing that. So let me just give you an example of a poll and a survey. Uh, so over here I am. Uh, so over here you can see a poly survey. Uh, and uh, it is, uh, you know, I've created some sort of random sample poll and uh, you've got three options and uh, some and if you select an option and submit a vote, the second card gets updated. So, uh, you know, a polling is a great way for your team to come together and collaborate. Uh, OK. Um, and in essence of everything, just to summarize, like what it means to develop a bot uh, for a scenario, uh, uh, what it means to have a bot scenario inside a channel, it's effectively this interactions that can be resolved in a single request response cycle where the results are useful for multiple members of the conversation. So really when you think about a, a bot development for a channel, this is the scenario that you want to target. Bots and group chats. So bot, bots and group chats are largely going to be similar uh, in terms of the in terms of the, the type of uh, scenarios that you would develop for a bot inside a channel. So uh, you know, think of uh, you can think of bots and group chats similar to bots and channels. Again, a scenario where have, like polling and survey type scenarios would translate just as well. Bots and one-on-one -on -one chats. So if you've done uh, bot development previously, this is the tra traditional way for a conversational bot to interact with a user inside Teams. Um, a good example over here would be uh, a virtual assistant bot, a Q&A bot, uh, a bot that is uh, a bot that is really accomplishing a single user to uh, to gather information or, or to accomplish a task that is that that is more personal in nature. So, for example, if I want to uh, create an expense report or I want to like understand like what are the HR policies of my organization or what are if I require some IT admin assistance or uh, IT, IT assistance. All of those scenarios make perfect sense in a one on one chat and this is probably what you're most familiar with. OK, so this was just a little bit of context on like how bots work in teams and uh, what type of scenarios make uh, sense across the three different uh, level, three different uh, contexts that we have for collaboration. Uh, let's look at how bots work. So there are three main components that you will need to get a conversation to get a conversational bot up and running within Microsoft Teams. The first one is going to be a publicly web accessible web service that you host. So this is going to be your backend service where you um, where, where you code and develop the functionality of your of your application of your bot. The second thing is you're going to have to register this bot with the bot framework with the Microsoft bot framework. And we'll and I'll show you how to do that. We've got an internal app called uh, within Microsoft Teams that's called App Studio that helps you do that. And lastly, you will create a Teams app package that contains your app manifest. So the app manifest is um, it's 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 a, it's a simple JSON file, and I'll uh, show this to you as well. So if those two things don't make sense, that's fine. We'll actually go into that in more detail. But just briefly, uh, the manifest is a simple JSON file that uh, helps the teams of the Microsoft Teams app uh, under the Microsoft Teams platform understand what type of bot you're developing and uh, what type of capability you're developing. So if you're not familiar with Teams development, we will also go into that a little bit. Just think of it as it's a simple JSON file. It's helping teams understand that what your app, what your bot is, what your name is and uh, what your bot's name is and some branding such as logo and stuff. OK. So how are bots uh, unique in Microsoft Teams? Um, so for this, um, let's um, let's just let me just head over to this uh, uh, section over here about how bots work. So uh, if you search for how bots work and um, uh, and you will uh, how bots work um, Microsoft bot framework, this article should pop up and uh, one of us will actually uh, share it in the chat as well. So you have access to it from there. Uh, but um, effectively, just let me give you. Uh, there is really there is one simple um, uh, there is one core concept over here that I just want to briefly touch over. I'm not going to go into too much detail, but just giving you a high level overview. So uh, a bot is an app that users interact that your users interact with in a conversational way. So every interaction between the user and the bot generates an activity. So for example, 
you're in the channel over here in a web chat or in teams and your bot is over here user joining or the user sending a message hi this is like considered an, an activity from the services perspective now jumping back in uh, the microsoft bot framework sdk they provide an activity handler class that abstracts all of these methods to you that abstracts all of these incoming calls and messages and cards and provides uh, uh, and, pro and associates each call with a specific method that then you can then use to build on top of that and create your own custom code. The Teams Activity Handler class is derived from the, the Bot Framework's Activity Handler class, and it extends upon it with team-specific activities or team-specific bot events. So what are these? So these are these could be team member events, uh, such as a member is added to a team. So for example, over here, I'm in this particular team, uh, I do a managed team, and I choose to add a member. If your bot is a part of this team, it will have a, it will it will it will be provided access to that event, and uh, we'll see like we'll actually see what you could potentially do with some of these events. Similarly, channel created, channel destroyed, or team events if a team is renamed, message reactions. So this is the one that we're going to dive in a little uh, deeper. But effectively, if I am inside a bot and you know someone just goes and uh, likes a message, so I'm just going to line like a bot message over here. Uh, you could actually use this information and, and do something with it. This is provided as an event back to you. So all of these type of events will be a part of the Teams Activity Handler class. OK, so let's dive into developing bots for Microsoft Teams. So as I'm explaining this to you, uh, I do want to call out that um, unit uh, two and three. So unit two is an overview and unit three is the exercise. So I'm going to be doing unit two and unit three uh, together simultaneously. Unit three goes into a lot more detail than it's possible for us to cover within like an hour and 15 minutes. Actually, all of this module is very detailed and very well done, so definitely do uh, recommend that you read through it on your own time. But what I'm going to give you today is just going to give you the scaffolding and the overview as to how to go through about it. So unit three, uh, unit two and unit three, sorry, I'm going to be uh, doing it together and then Conversely, four and five will be all going through this together. So let's dive into it. So um, developing bots for Microsoft Teams. So as we discussed, uh, uh, there are like basically two to three steps that you need to do over here. The first one is you need to create a web, web service, then you need to register the bot with the Microsoft Bot Framework, and then you need to create a Teams uh, Anifist app package, and then you will actually uh, upload that app package into, so you will sideload it into Microsoft Teams and uh, test and run the bot. So let's look at the first part of uh, creating a web service. Um, actually, uh, let me uh, stop over here. Hmm. So uh, let me just uh, stop over here and uh, see if there are any questions uh, that I have so far. Uh, and if there are any questions, maybe just let us know and uh, I'll, I'll take them. But uh, I will also just cover uh, this module. OK, so I'm not seeing anything. OK, so I will also just cover this module and maybe in another 15, 20 minutes, I will also stop. So if there have got any questions in terms of like uh, how, uh, uh, you know, if there's something that's not clear to you, just let me know and uh, uh, we'll, we'll see if I can address it for everyone on the call. If, if the moderators can just help you by yourself, and they'll also take care of that. But um, uh, the other thing is uh, I don't really have a lot of feedback. You know, this is typically supposed to be a workshop sort of a call. So just let me know, uh, you know, in terms of pace, if you're able to follow along uh, or if like we need to like uh, slow down too much uh, or, or, or speed up. You know? OK, so create a web service. So the web service is really the heart. Um, so the heart of your board is your web service. It will define a single HTTPS route on which to receive all your requests. Uh, the Microsoft Bot Framework will send different types of messages to your web servers, and effectively, um, you will then use these uh, type of incoming commands to take action on your side. Uh, we highly recommend that you use uh, one of our um, uh, uh, Microsoft, uh, one of our one of the Teams um, application bot development SDKs, for example, uh, either, uh, either the C Sharp SDK. 
uh, or the JavaScript uh, TypeScript slash uh, Node.js Node, uh, Node uh, SDK for uh, making these, uh, for, for uh, converting these messages into actionable methods for you. Uh, and you know, it will greatly simplify your process. Um, the second thing that you will do is you will register the web service with the Microsoft Bot Framework, and I'll dive deeper into this, and then we'll create the Teams uh, manifest app package. So let me just go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing I want you to do is uh, I want you to go to GitHub.com Microsoft Bot Builder samples, and uh, can we also paste this in the chat too, please? Uh, and uh, so. Anytime you're thinking of developing a bot for Microsoft Teams or just any type of um, bot development for Microsoft in, in general, head over to Bot Builder Samples. You'll find a lot of uh, great samples over here, and uh, these are like very targeted for you. So you can like uh, once you've identified what scenario you have, you can always start from here. They're they're scoped out so that it just provides the basic scaffolding for you, and then you can build on top of that. So I'm gonna. Uh, uh, clone this repository for, for myself. Uh, if you don't have Git installed, you can also download it. Uh, so please uh, go ahead and do that. Okay. So I'm going to go into a folder over here. Let uh, get clone this repository. Um, yeah, if you don't have Git installed, you can also just uh, download the zip. Uh, so this is done. Mm, I'll just give uh, this some time to do that. Uh, in parallel, let's just open Visual Studio Code too. So uh, the uh, so the sample that we're going to use today is uh, sample number 57, which is Teams conversational bot. Uh, I want you to click on the second column over here because uh, we're going to use the JavaScript version. So um, this is basically uh, what uh, uh, this is. This is the this is effectively what we're going to do today. Uh, this bot, it does three types of things. Uh, the first one is it can send you some sort of a welcome card that helps you interact with it. And it operates under persons group, uh, group chat scope and team chat scope. Uh, the bot will al also mention you back by name. So if you type uh, if you type to the men uh, bot mention me or like just mention, it will return your name back to you. Uh, the bot can also send uh, one on one chats to all members inside uh, a team chat or a group chat. And all of these uh, three different uh, capability types, we can uh, go. Ahead, uh, we'll go ahead and demonstrate. So, just briefly giving you uh, giving an overview of like the different types of uh, the different steps involved in today's process. The first one is uh, cloning the repository. So, we've already hopefully we've already gone ahead and done that. Uh, secondly, uh, we'll go into. Well, I'll do this with you, but like well, just copy this path. And uh, we'll navigate to this particular path within our Visual Studio Code. Then we'll install the modules. Uh, we'll uh, use ngrok, uh, and um, so uh, and we'll use ngrok and point it to port three nine seven eight. Uh, steps five, six, seven. Uh, these steps uh, we're not uh, we're not exactly going to follow along uh, because uh, for our purposes and for the purposes of this demo, we'll just host the service locally. Uh, obviously, full on. If you want to go ahead and actually deploy this bot, then you would need an Azure subscription. So uh, 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 later on, when you're almost ready for deployment, I uh, please reference these again. And uh, that, that then we just go uh, npm start. Uh, let me also briefly give an overview of ngrok. Uh, so ngrok is uh, a tunneling, uh, is basically a tunneling, tunneling application. That allows you to connect uh, uh, connect your local web service uh, to an HTTPS endpoint uh, that is accessible via the public internet. So it gives you a messaging endpoint, and Teams requires this messaging endpoint because uh, you know you need some place to connect to your uh, 
we need some place to send these messages to your bot service to. So this messaging endpoint that uh, we will uh, use for demo today, we'll use NROC for it. Uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's a simple. Um, you can uh, if you don't have it, uh, please go ahead and download it as well. Um, but you know, um, I feel like most of you would be familiar with these tools. So I'm um, going to grab this uh, path and I'm going to head back into Visual Studio Code. Head over into File on the top left and uh, click Open Folder. This is uh, the fourth option. Now uh, this is what I have from an older repository. Now uh, navigate to uh, the bot builder samples uh, folder, wherever it was for you. I'm just gonna um, I'm just gonna paste this path over here and click select folder. Okay, um, maybe that didn't click. Let's just try it once more. So uh, I was having some issues, but I have uh, effectively uh, what I want you to do is just navigate onto the team's conversational board uh, uh, folder over here. So this is going to be, um, let me just clarify this a little bit better. So I want you to navigate to this particular, uh, uh, to, to this particular subfolder within the bot builder uh, repository. And uh, once you're there, you will have, uh, this it should exactly look uh, your view and my view should exactly be the same. Uh, and then it'd be really great if you could open the Teams JavaScript uh, Teams uh, Teams conversation uh, Teams conversation dot bot dot JavaScript file and the index dot JavaScript file. So those two those two are what you really need. Uh, okay. So uh, once you've done that, the next thing for us to do would be to install the NPM modules. So uh, go into terminal and uh, click your terminal. And make sure that you are within this path. Uh, make sure you're within the um, uh, 57 teams conversational board, um, um, 57 teams conversational board folder, and then uh, type in NPM install. And this should install all the modules for you. You might get some warnings or errors, but uh, that's fine. Uh, no, no issues there. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is, so if you followed along so far, now we're going to switch gear and we're going to go into uh, Microsoft Teams and we will open App Studio. So App Studio is uh, an application that is provided by the Microsoft Teams platform to help you uh, streamline your manifest edition. And basically it's a, it's a submission tool for your apps as well. So if you're developing any sort of um, app for Microsoft Teams, I definitely recommend that you check it out. So, um, oh, uh, and actually let me tell you how you can navigate to that. So if you're back within, uh, if you're in the Microsoft Teams standard, just go, go over to apps, and uh, just search for an application called App Studio. And it'll be App Studio slash uh, developer tools as the subtext. And uh, click on it and just click open. Yeah. So uh, uh, then you'll be in this particular screen. Uh, the next thing I want you to do is head on over to Manifest Editor. And uh, select create a new app on the left hand side. 
So over here, this will guide us through the application uh, development process, uh, the application, the required fields for an app for Microsoft Teams to understand what your application is. Uh, so we're looking at fields such as short name and app ID will generate this for you. A package name, a version, a description, uh, and developer information. You can also add uh, stuff around branding such as your, your app icon uh, to really customize and uh, personalize your app. So I'm going to go ahead and give my app a name. I'm going to call it um, demo contoso demo app. Uh, and then I'll generate an app ID. Uh, I will also create a okay, also create and give it a pack, package name com dot uh, dot bot. It can be whatever you like it to be. Uh, and uh, just give it a version. Uh, just a short uh, description. My first bot. Uh, mentions me back uh, uh, sends a welcome message to all users in a chat or a channel. Uh, some developer information. We have put in Contoso, um, enter your website, make sure it's uh, HTTPS. Now just follow the convention. And uh, just copy this over because you'll need this for the privacy statement. So what I typically do is uh, just do Contoso slash privacy. And uh, similarly, Contoso slash uh, terms of use. Um, once you're done with all this, uh, you could uh, you can choose to add uh, an icon if you'd like to, but uh, otherwise, we'll just use the default icons in Teams. Then uh, the next thing that you want to define is the capabilities. So every app within Microsoft Teams has um, these four or five different capabilities. Uh, uh, as we like to call them. So you could either build an application that is a tab, an application that is a board, a connector or a message extension. Your application could also be a combination of all of these four or five or, or just a few of them, like it could be a tab plus a board or a board plus a message extension. So are, those are all uh, you know good combinations to have. Uh, I will also cover this towards the end of the talk. I will, you know, let's see, uh, depending on how we do for time. I would like to give you uh, like a, a brief overview as to what those uh, different capabilities are. But for today, since we're uh, developing a bot, uh, let's just go into bot and click set up. And uh, we're going to create a, a new bot. So let's give our bot a name. Contours demo bot. Uh, and scope. So we've already discussed scope and detail today. So it's going to be personal team and group chat. Uh, Create bot. So what is, what this is doing for us is uh, like this is I would say this uh, the simple one of the simplest methods that we have for uh, creating a bot and registering it with um, um, uh, Microsoft um, uh, with the Microsoft uh, bot framework. So you you remember how we were talking about the three steps that you need to create a bot for Microsoft Teams. The first one being uh, the web service, which we're going to uh, do over here, uh, which we're going to host locally, uh, via, uh, develop via Visual Studio Code and host locally. The second part of it was uh, register your web service as a bot with the Microsoft Bot Framework. So this is, uh, so the second part of this is actually really simplified by the uh, App Studio, and this is what we're doing over here. So go ahead and copy, uh, copy this ID over under Contoso Bot for me and head back into Visual Studio. Now, uh, if you look at the, if you go into the uh, index.javascript uh, index JavaScript file, you will find that there is On line 23 and line 24, you will find that there is an app ID and an associated password for this. So what you want to do is 
and you want to cap, uh, you would, uh, you should, sorry. Uh, the app ID that you just copied over from, uh, the app ID that you just copied or uh, created uh, inside uh, App Studio, just paste it over here. One and 231. Okay, this is the same thing. The next thing is uh, we also need a password. So head over into add passwords and uh, click generate new password. And just copy this over. So, uh, you know, the funny thing about this is you will only see this once. So make sure you just copy it somewhere and you have it with you. So, and then, uh, right over here. And that's it. Uh, that should be all you have to do uh, so far. Uh, then you can actually uh, just yeah. The the next thing that you uh, uh, that we need to do is just I don't know, go ahead and start this. So npm start and. The service is running on node uh, 3978. Okay. So let's head back into uh, um, uh, let's head back into your browser inside Microsoft Teams and continue the process. The the next thing that we need uh, over here is uh, a messaging endpoint. So this is where we uh, and Rock comes into place for us. This is uh, nothing but an endpoint where all the Teams events will be routed to your uh, to your backend service, so then you can process them. So I'm going to use NROC, and uh, I am we have. So just open, just open NROC, wherever you are uh, inside a terminal, and just type in NROC HTTP three nine seven eight. I think that was a port. Just, let me just check. Yep, three nine seven eight. Or just type in ngrok http 3978. Yep, and it'll give you an HTTPS endpoint that is being routed to your local host over here to port 3978. So copy this over, head back into your browser, and uh, add it over here. As you do that, make sure you append this with API slash um, messages. Why do we do this? Because our service is listening to um, over here in, inside the index uh, JavaScript file. We're listening uh, to incoming requests uh, inside API slash messages. So make sure you do append that. Now, uh, I think at this point, we're pretty much set up from a functional perspective. Now, all we have to do is go ahead and uh, test and distribute this app. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into test and distribute and I'm going to click install. And I'll click add. OK, so now Teams has added it for me and I have fingers crossed if I've done everything right. We never really know how uh, demos are going to go, but if I've done everything right, the service should be working now. So I send the board a message. And. Uh, OK. So we can see there is some sort of error that's happening over here. So let's actually try and debug this. This is interesting. So uh, another thing with NGROC is that if you head over to HTTP localhost 4040, uh, you can actually uh, tell if uh, messages are getting posted uh, to the service or not. So what we're seeing is that uh, the messages are getting routed to us over here. Uh, over here, see, for example, I had sent a high message, so it is coming to my bot. But for whatever reason, uh, it's not getting picked up. Uh, OK, so I've got an unhandled error exception over here. OK, 
get token request. Okay, so I guess I'm having some sort of issues with my token. Okay, let me uh, do this. Let me dominate the process. And just make sure that I'm doing everything right. So it looks like I'm missing the secret, but uh, I did have the app password, the bot password associated with the app over here. Uh, oh, okay, I see what I did there. So what I did was uh, I forgot to copy over the password and I pasted in the app ID and the app password twice, which is, uh, yeah, that's my bad. It'll just, uh, so let's, this is fixable. So let's go back into App Studio and inside the manifest editor. Could uh, also what app? Uh, go over to bot and let's generate a new password. Uh, uh, copy this over. Okay. Heading back into App Studio. This. Uh, let's start again. Okay. Uh, now everything's set up to the same degree. Uh, so I'm going to jump back in and uh, head back into the chat and say hi. And if everything is functioning this time, I should see a welcome card. Great. So we're lucky that uh, the demo worked this time. Okay. So um, let me just uh, go ahead. So so the way this bot works is it's actually quite funny. Uh, we have it uh, configured in such a way that no matter what we send the bot, if we don't really understand what's happening, it will just send this welcome card back to us. So uh, that's effectively all of it, all that it does. Uh, another thing that I want to uh, call out over here is that some of you, depending on whether you were able to uh, follow the instructions along or not earlier, might not have side loading enabled for your tenant. So in this case, when you go over to the test and distribute section and you click install, uh, when you click add over here, it, this might be grayed out for you. So over here, if you're logged in as the admin, uh, there is a workaround for you, uh, which uh, might be possible. So go ahead and, uh, sorry, go ahead and download, uh, click on download, and this downloads, um, this downloads a zip file for you. Uh, the same zip file, if you head over into the Teams app store, click apps over here at the bottom, and click up, upload a, click on upload a custom app. So upload for Contoso, which is the entire tenant. And just click on and then just uh, upload this uh, sample app of the demo app, your, your zip file that you created, whatever it was named. And it'll show up within the build for Contoso uh, 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 LOB store. Then you go over here and you can then add it normally as you would any other app. So I'm going to add it to a team this time and I will add it to the to, to the general channel of the market project team and we'll set it up. OK. Um, so over here, another thing that uh, I should probably, well, uh, this is actually a really good time to talk about it. Uh, when we're operating in one on one scope, your bot will have access to all the messages uh, that are provided as part of it. But when you're operating in a team scope, your bot only has access to the messages where it's at mentioned. So when you at mention the bot over here and you say hi, uh, the bot will reply back with a welcome card. So, uh, you know, it's uh, the same welcome card uh, in a channel versus a, a, a bot chat. 
the difference was that uh, the difference was that in order for you to engage for for me as a user to engage with the bot, I have to uh, I have to at mention the app. But in terms of functionality, it's pretty much the same. So uh, 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 the uh, the bot will have access to all messages in a in a bot chat, but in a group chat or a, uh, or in the context of a channel or not, it will only have uh, your bot will only have access access to the messages. Uh, where it's been at mentioned. Uh, OK, so you know if you followed along so far, then you should have uh, your very first board up and running, uh, your very first board uh, available and up and running within Microsoft Teams. So congrats. Uh, I'm going to ask the moderators if we've got any questions so far at this point that we would like to take or uh, maybe give folks uh, some time to follow along because you know it's like more of a conversation uh, more of a workshop event and I uh, I'm sorry if I'm going too fast or too slow it's, it's really hard to judge and you know, I'm just uh, giving you guys a live stream. OK. So there are no questions so far. OK, great. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, continue onwards. So we have accomplished. Um, so if you followed along so far, uh, then we're actually through with the core of what we wanted to convey with units two and three. You've gone ahead and uh, created a bot and you've uh, uh, you've gone ahead and created a bot registered it with uh, the Microsoft bot framework and uh, deployed it and uh, tested it lo locally. Uh, let me just uh, review. So this is really good. So you know, towards the end of uh, each section, he's got these. Uh, he's got uh, a way for you to review what we've learned so far. So let's just quickly go over this. Uh, so uh, what we learned today, the basics of conversational bot. A conversation is a series of messages sent between you and your bot and one or more users. There are three types of conversations, also called scopes and teams. The first one is the team or the channel scope where multiple members or all members of, of the team can come together and collaborate. A group chat that is a conversation between a bot and two or more users. A personal chat that is a conversation between a bot and a single user. Right uh, and uh, in a group chat and a team scope, the bot only has access to the messages where it's at mentioned. In the personal scope, your bot has access to all the messages because obviously the user is talking to you. Uh, we covered activity types. Uh, we covered like you know uh, specific teams related activity types uh, with regards to receiving a message, sending a message, channel being created, channel being destroyed. Uh, and uh, you know we actually we actually did a little bit more. We went ahead and you know uh, looked at visuals. Um, sorry, uh, App Studio and uh, deployed the bot. Great. I'm just gonna close this one. Uh, close this too. And uh, yeah, so you know now uh, followed along so far where uh, we've accomplished module two and module three. So I'm going to head over to module four uh, bots in Microsoft Teams and channels and group chats. Uh, so this is another unit. So I'll be taking uh, units four and five together largely and uh, 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 just to set like the high level overview of what's happening over here. Uh, uh, we really want to give you some sort of a context as to what it really means to develop a bot for teams and how bot development within teams is different from uh, bot development elsewhere. And the difference comes in by uh, the different activity types and what you can do with them. Uh, there are certain actions that you will only take within the context of a team, right? For example, uh, a channel is being created or a like there are channel events where a channel is created, a channel renamed or a channel is destroyed. You wouldn't really have you wouldn't really have to think through these scenarios if you were uh, if you were going and uh, if you were going and developing for let's say uh, a web chat. These are team specific, so this is a great place to like just sort of understand and orient how. Uh, 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 how the workflows would be different and how the methods would be different, you know, for when you're developing for teams versus elsewhere. Uh, then another interesting thing is message reactions, where uh, uh, you know, for example, you can go ahead and uh, like messages. 
for bots. And you can actually parse this code and it does something for you. So now what I want you to do is um, um, actually let me. Uh, so let's do this actually. So let's just go ahead and copy this code over and let's do something with it. So copy this third on reactions method. So just copy this entire method over for yourself from uh, the message reactions event. And uh, head back over into uh, the Visual Studio uh, code editor. Head back into the team's conversational bot.js uh, uh, file and go. Um, let's add this method over here to have something to do with it. So I've actually got uh, this method over from like an earlier demo that I did. So I'm just going to delete this, but uh, for your case, you shouldn't have it. If, we're, if you're over at line 33, no, sorry, 43, under the on members added activity, uh, it should be blank for you. So just go ahead and paste it. And uh, since we're using JavaScript and not uh, TypeScript in this case, uh, you're more than welcome to use TypeScript too. Uh, just go ahead and delete this for me so it works. So what this method is doing is it's from the team's activity handler class. And what it's doing is that every time we receive a reaction type which is equal to like, uh, we return a message back uh, that says thank you. So hit control C, terminate the job, and then restart the service. not copied the thing of this. No, I don't think I'm. No. Let me go back. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, my bad. Uh, so we also need the await next method. Uh, uh, just go ahead and copy this entire thing over. Just sorry, it's um, early in the morning for me. I've been up all night. Just remove these TypeScript identifiers and uh, head back into the terminal and uh, again. I'm just going to clear the terminal. That usually just works in case <laughs> we don't know what to do. So I'm going to start this again. Uh, and now we've got the service up and running in port 3978. So heading back into um, heading back into our bot for Microsoft Teams. Now, uh, if we've done everything correctly, and when I go ahead and like this message, it should reply back with a thank you. Uh, and yep, so it's working. So it's saying thank you back to us. So uh, you know, uh, this is it. Uh, play around more with it. This gives you uh, a little more hands-on experience with uh, channel-specific events uh, for Microsoft Teams. For the third part of this course, um, 
This is really a, a very interesting scenario for bot development within Microsoft Teams. It's called uh, proactive messaging. So proactive messages are sent by a bot to start a conversation. Uh, there are two main uh, uh, there are two main scenarios that uh, proactive messages make a lot of sense for you to consider when you're developing a bot. The first one is a welcome message. So the first time uh, a user installs your bot, you will want to send them some sort of a welcome message that says, hey, this is uh, what my bot can do. Or this is my bot and this is what I can do. So you can see over here, even in this example, you know, we have some sort of a welcome card. Uh, which tells, uh, which gives functionality, uh, which provides an overview of what this bot can do. So the first thing it can do is it can message all members inside the team. So um, since I'm a member of this team, it will send a message to all members of this team. So uh, back in the chat pane, uh, it sends a welcome message to everyone. So you could uh, enable something like this for proactive messaging. Uh, Another scenario, and then you know, attacking back that the message has been sent. Uh, you could also uh, you know, update the card, which is uh, what this board is telling you that it's it's a functionality that it has. Now, uh, heading back in terms of proactive messaging, so the first one is a welcome message. It's it's generally just a good idea to introduce to your users what the bot is, uh, especially upon install and what its capabilities are. The second one is a notification. Uh, so this is an external event has happened. For example, if you've uh, got an LOB bot deployed for your local tenant and you want to release announcements, that hey, here are some uh, travel related announcement or uh, please provide this feedback. If not like a company wide poll or a survey to blast to people, then you could send uh, a proactive messaging and uh, uh, give it to everyone. Um, the important thing to note about proactive messaging is it is a very powerful scenario and you'll read more about it over here, but please do use it sparingly because uh, yeah, and, and provide enough context to the user. Uh, please do use it sparingly and provide enough context to the users uh, to make sure they understand why they're being messaged because uh, if you do this too much, then it could feel like spam coming from your bot. And the users might, you know, choose to block your bot. Uh, in that case, so you, so it's, it's a great way to engage your users, but at the same time, you you want to be careful with uh, the extent to which you use it. Um, now, uh, I'm going to jump back in. You know, we've got about uh, 20 minutes left over here, so I'm going to jump back in and uh, run through uh, uh, a bit of. Uh, just provide uh, so uh, these slides that I have in one and two, all of these slides are available uh, from the learn module. So um, Andrew Connell has uh, pushed them onto GitHub, I think. So you can uh, access those from there. So these are the same slides that I have. Uh, now I'm just going to go ahead and what I'm going to do for this last section is I will just uh, give you guys an overview of, of what it means uh, for some other application capabilities in teams and uh, if we have uh, we'll leave it, and then if we have time i'll also show you some mocks like for examples of messaging extensions or we can take uh, or we can take uh, messages uh, or sorry or we can take questions depending on what or what you're getting so if we can uh, collect uh, messages Oh, sorry, collect questions, then we can probably take one or two. Uh, uh, related to proactive messaging, we've got a skilling session up. Uh, uh, tips for Teams developers, authentication and proactive messaging. I would highly recommend SK106. If you guys should go and check this out if you're interested in uh, proactive messaging, uh, because uh, we will go into as much detail as we probably have uh, from a Teams platform perspective. For both of these things, you will learn about uh, the correct way of fetching the user's information and additional cons uh, constraints with regards to uh, the number of messages you can send and throttling, which a lot of developers run into. So uh, just go ahead and check that message out. I think it's going to be a really good resource for you guys. Okay. Uh, yeah. So let me just recap the workflow for application development inside of Teams. Uh, uh, there. Are, what we did today can just be encapsulated in four different steps. 
the first thing is we you define what your app is right you we we create the app manifest and within the app manifest we went and uh, we went ahead and decided that we were going to do a pot that was going to operate in the te uh, team scope the person scope and the group chat scope uh, similarly you could have created a tab or a message extension which we'll see shortly so this is the first type where you identify what scenario that, that you want to enable the second thing is you implement the capability. This is where you actually code and develop your bot. So this was the part where we uh, hosted the service locally. Uh, we recommend that you use the team's SDKs. You are more than welcome to directly uh, use the uh, service messages yourself. And uh, the third part is that you test the app. So this is where you create your app package and then you sideload it onto a team. Uh, so we saw that in your uh, Microsoft 365 developer tenant, how you can do that. Uh, you could also choose to enable sideloading. So if you search for sideloading or uh, if we have a link for sideloading, we could probably paste it in as part of the chat as well. No, actually, so the link to enable sideloading was all, is also accessible from the prerequisites of this, uh, of this call. Uh, so in the first, um, if you go head over into the, the prerequisite section uh, of, this, uh, of this build session, you'll find the link over there. But uh, I, I think one of us will paste it in the chat too. Then uh, you have uh, finally the last step where you distribute the app. So over here, I locally uploaded it to, for myself or for a team to test it. You can publish it to your organization's uh, 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 LOB catalog. So if you're the admin, you can add it to the LOB store as I did over there, uh, or you can submit it to you know App Source, uh, and you know you can give it to Microsoft for it to be made available globally for, for everyone, and it will be a part of the Teams App Store. Okay. Uh, here's an overview of the different extensibility endpoints. So Microsoft Teams provides a very rich and extensible, uh, uh, rich and extensible platform for you to bring your apps experience within uh, within teams we have tabs bots message extensions uh, actions task modules and notifications pretty much any anything and everything that you can think of in terms of collaborating uh, with an audience or engaging with a user in a one-on-one -on -one context to provide information to them uh, the majority of these scenarios you should be able to achieve and if there's something that you're not, uh, you know, that, that you that you want to do and you're not able to do, uh, I will share some resources towards the end on how you can reach out to us. You can either send us an email or uh, we also track user voice for additional feature requests for the scenarios that you want to enable and you'd like us to simplify. So just briefly, uh, tabs. Tabs are a big canvas to host your UI. So this is effectively, you know, you can create some sort of a a dashboard or a list of work items within users. So these are part of a channel and uh, they provide uh, a means for users to track the overall progress. Uh, uh, like, you know, a web app would be a good example of what you could do inside a tab. Uh, the second thing would be bots. Uh, so bots we've already looked at. These are conversation apps, you know, work great inside channels, one on one context. Then we've got something uh, such as message extensions and message actions. So these provide a way for you to share rich, actionable cards uh, inside a team or a channel. And this is the one that I'll dive deeper into. So you'll actually see what I mean by message extensions. And lastly, notifications. So you know, you, for notifications, you could uh, develop a bot to uh, tunnel notifications into uh, a channel, uh, for example, using proactive messaging or, uh, or, even, a, or even have a one-on-one -on -one bot that provides notifications to a single user. Additionally, there are things called uh, connectors and uh, there are connectors and incoming web box that you can use to uh, provide information inside Microsoft Teams incoming web box as well. Um, task modules, uh, task modules are basically they're, they're a modal pop up within Teams that lets you collect information and I'll go through this as well. Uh, briefly, before I move on, I'm going to switch gears back into um, uh, the learn module over here. And if you go to the extend Microsoft Teams associate path, you will see uh, there are additional learning modules for uh, message extensions, uh, tabs, uh, task modules, and in, uh, incoming web books and Office 365 characters. So all of these capabilities that I just discussed over here, we've got the corresponding modules for you. 
So once you've gone through your uh, interact, create the interactive conversational bots for Microsoft Teams, start with this one, and you can build on top of it with the other modules. Okay. A few sample scenarios. So this is just uh, to give you some sort of a context on uh, where to get started with your uh, sample scenarios for Teams. Uh, uh, Microsoft Teams is really a collaboration uh, app which brings together users and have them collaborate in real time. So a scenario such as uh, a DevOps scenario, such as incident management inside a channel would be a great example if you're trying to develop a bot. Sharing information uh, makes a lot of sense uh, as well. So uh, if you're familiar with Azure DevOps or an uh, application like Trello, where what you're doing is you've got uh, or Jira, for example, we have got an external database of work items that you want to track and you want to share them and bring them in the, in the, within Microsoft Teams and have a conversation about them. Uh, you know, uh, sharing sharing information is a perfect uh, is a perfect example. Create and collect. This is similar in the sense that you know uh, people are collaborating and working together in Teams and uh, have information that that they would want to store locally somewhere. So you've got like some sort of a wiki application. You can use something like a message action to gather all that data and store it from there. Notifications we've already gone through. You can initiate complex workflows, so you can use, um, you know, you can create a scenario such as for approvals or uh, HR management or for uh, expense expense reporting. All of these complex approvals and uh, all of these complex uh, scenarios and business processes can be automated within Teams. And lastly, inform. You know, uh, it's like I would say, notification and inform. You're you're trying to like uh, gather. You're you're trying to have your audience have the right kind of. Uh, since your audience is living within Teams, you can uh, provide all the necessary information to them. Uh, the idea, fundamentally, if I can distill this down into one sentence of the essence, is you know, within Teams, uh, where the users are living, your application should be uh, like a hub where the user doesn't have to leave Teams and they can just operate from uh, from there and access all the information uh, and uh, and get their workflows done without having to switch context. If you can enable that, that really enables powerful powerful collaboration scenario that streamlines a user's flow. And you know, these are just sample examples for you to get started. Uh, OK, built for teams and individuals. Uh, so uh, uh, I feel like I've, I've spoken about this a little more, but this really is uh, something that uh, probably deserves a little more, or just a little more of a, of, of a shout out that um, when you're developing for an individual versus when you're developing for a team on a channel, your scenario that you're going to use is going to change. Inside a team on a channel, you're going to discuss complex work items or have complex workflows such as approvals, or you're going to share information. You're going to bring people together and have them collaborate on a particular topic. In a personal scope, what you're going to do is you will help an individual user complete tasks or provide them some sort of a information lookup scenario. So this is where a personal assistant type of scenario will really shine through. OK, and lastly, publishing apps to the store, to the tenant store, or to a team for local testing. OK. Message extensions or uh, search. So uh, you uh, so you remember how we discussed message extensions on another extensibility endpoint within Microsoft Teams. So search is one of the these capabilities. So what this means is that um, I'm over here. Yeah. This is more visible. So uh, I'm over here uh, collaborating inside a channel, and uh, I click on this app icon over here for my Contoso app. And what this does is this creates a messaging extension, and uh, you can search for put items within your app's database. So the user can go ahead and search for items within the app's database, and then they can uh, select them. And once they've selected them, they can paste them inside a conversation and you can add a message on top of it. It's like, hey, here's the project I was talking about earlier. 
um, and you can create some sort of a conversation about them so people can come together and collaborate. And you know, this is a great example of bringing external information to Microsoft Teams actions. So you're using user input to create some sort of an action flow from it, and then you're posting a card at the end of it. So over here, uh, you click on actions. Uh, so you're clicking, uh, so the user is going to click on the plus icon. This, what this does is it, it generates a task module that we briefly touched upon earlier. Task module is nothing but a pop-up modal experience. You typically want to use this anytime that you are engaging with the user and you want to collect information. So you want to do a form entry and, and you're trying to understand like, you know, over here we're using it for creating a new task. We need all of these fields to be entered. Uh, then based on that, we can hit create and then the, another ticket type gets created and it uh, gets pasted back within a channel. Um, lastly, we've got link and following. So you're probably familiar with what link and following is. So uh, in this scenario, what I've done is I've gone ahead and pasted a link on uh, projects.com. And what we do is we provide this once Teams recognizes that this particular domain has been registered by your app. Uh, we tunnel this information to you and uh, the app is able to send us back. Uh, yeah, so what the app does is and, and then the app sends us back a call and it says that OK, for this particular link, uh, I can expand this into a card type. So we send a call to your app and then the user can click on a button and expand the card. Uh, now the important thing to know is we're getting rid of that one extra click in 57. So we're actually going to streamline this experience within this quarter. But uh, the end experience is, uh, you know, typically when I'm doing this, I'm operating in some sort of an external website. You know, let's say I'm in Visual Studio and I will copy that link and paste it into Teams. If you have link and following enabled, uh, Microsoft Teams will automatically take that link and create a rich card type for you. So rather than the user having to search for it, it just streams the entire process. And then you can set it. And that's it. And then, you know, uh, so all three scenarios, three ways of getting a card into a team. Uh, okay. Uh, let me. Okay, so that's all I had. So these are a bunch of resources that I have for you uh, if you're getting started with your um, bots development journey. So bots and teams um, head over to this link, search for platform what are bots. Uh, the bot framework documentation is also a great place to get started. The bot builder samples, which is what we use today. Uh, 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 in general, if you're looking to get started, uh, like, hey, I want to learn how to build a messaging extension with teams, or I want to build a link and following example with teams. We've got all of these examples over there. So you, rather than starting from scratch, you, you can use that as scaffolding. AdaptiveCards.io for adaptive cards. So once you're further along and you want to like, hey, I want to explore what it means to develop an outreach card types and teams, head over to AdaptiveCards.io and uh, learn about that. All of the latest developer updates will be available from our blog, uh, for, from the Teams developer blog. So um, head over to this resource. AKA.ms Teams Dev Docs. So if you're ever wondering where to start, start with AKA.ms Teams Dev, Dev Docs. And our GitHub repository has got samples for uh, app templates as well. So if you would like to build an app for proactively messaging all users inside your organization, which we find that to be a typical use case, uh, the template for that is available under the GitHub Office Dev account. And with that, we've concluded our uh, uh, presentation for today. Thank you so much. Uh, you know, I was had a great experience of presenting to you guys and. Uh, I uh, really hope that you learned uh, that you really learned something. It was useful for you. Um, go ahead and uh, provide your feedback via uh, aka.ms my uh, evals, and uh, you know make sure you continue your learning with the aka.ms learn extend teams path. And please, you know, head back on to the uh, main uh, my build event. There's more stuff. There's more good goodness happening for you over there. Okay, that's it for me. Thank you. Bye.